Okay, uh, here's uh, part three of the Strike Force Nunes versus Diaz 2 post fight analysis. Uh, Nick Diaz got the unanimous decision over KJ Nunes. Um, there is a contingent of fans out there that did see the fight going Nunes' way. Okay. Um, but, you know, I actually thought that Diaz should have won the fight, to be perfectly honest with you. I got, um, got two wins. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I can put it too. Yeah. You know, my mm -hmm. guy's good. They don't beat you. Mm -hmm. I don't um, need to go study all the data. They just beat you. Um, yeah. But, um. Man, yeah. let's talk about this, man. You, you don't like this guy. <coughs> Guess what? They kick your guy's ass. Oh, uh, actually, I don't really like his brother <coughs> very much. I, oh. I'm actually a fan of Nick Diaz. <laughs> Oh. I, I like Nick Diaz. <laughs> okay. I don't like Nate Diaz very much. Um, I think there's something about Nick. I don't, I don't know. They're like they're like the same guys, but like I just Nick always came off like the a little more immature than Nick. Nick personally, I, I he just comes across like just very immature, uh, somewhat cocky. A little too thuggish for my taste. I mean, like, <clears throat> you can actually say the same for Nick, though, which is, I, I, I don't really know why. I just like Nick more than Nate. There's something about Nick. Maybe he's had more fights. He, 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 he seems a little more humble at times, especially, like, after the Shamrock fight. I mean, after this fight, he wasn't exactly the most humble. But, you know, there, there are times when he comes off a little more humble than, like, Nate. Um... But uh, yeah, the fight itself, um, Noon's pretty much, he won round two, if I'm not mistaken. Round one was Diaz. He, he did actually uh, bring him to, to uh, one knee. Uh, got side mount, and then Noon's did something I really liked. He found that there was a sense of urgency being on the bottom against a Diaz brother. <laughs> Scrambled to standing. I, d I wish more fighters just had more sense of urgency when they're on the bottom. That's actually, that's actually, you're right. I mean, one thing is very impressive. I mean, we see so many fights. I mean, like we have so many commas. Some fighter just doesn't have that urgency. Yeah. And it, it was just really refreshing. I mean, obviously, Noons is best, is best in the standout. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he, he actually... Diaz doesn't have that like that good of a shot, so when he shot in, I mean, he just got stuffed, you know. Uh, that was the thing. I Nunes, I felt did get more power punches on Diaz. Um, Diaz was working more into volume mm -hmm. striking, but he didn't do it as extensively as he does it against a lot of his opponents. Around the fourth and fifth round, he was throwing a lot of these like flashy kicks that weren't even close to hitting. You know, I mean, it just looks like he was kind of throwing him to taunt. Really, um, Diaz did use his reach pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I I really like KJ Nunes' head movement though, and he was just like boom, boom, slip, body. I mean, he would slip under like a jab or something, or or a punch, and go for a body shot. Sometimes he'd actually hit a knee to the body too, and I I can see that in in that sense where and that's where he got most of the power shots from. Mm -hmm. It was mainly from the counters. I didn't really see that Diaz got the the bigger power shots. Per personally, I I just felt that like we we talk about this before though. We we talk about that. Uh, I even say you know, Diaz is not gonna have a power shot like your guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love I love Noon too. So it's just gonna be a lot of farming, which yeah. that's exactly what happened. Yeah, obviously Diaz uses reach really well. Noon's did punch a lot of air too. <laughs> I mean, he did manage to connect really well. I think the body punch is... Because Diaz has really good cardio, and it should he had better cardio than Noons. But I think those body shots actually really hampered the cardio of Diaz. Um, some kicks from Noons would have helped him really well. Uh, Noons will always get that pass, though, because he's a 155er, and he moved up to 170. And he looked really good in a very competitive fight against Nate, Nick Diaz. Which says a lot about Nick Diaz, you know. It's like, obviously a lot of people are say, are thinking like, well, if Diaz goes up against a wrestler, he's going to lose. That's why, you know, Tywin Woodley versus Diaz is going to be really interesting. 
if Diaz went to the UFC, a lot of people don't think he'd do very well, especially against the wrestlers. And there's holes in his stand-up, too. I mean, he does get tagged. You know, and he throws a lot of bottom, but he gets tagged a lot. <laughs> you know. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it was good. Um, it was a good fight. Um, a lot of people took issue with Mauro Ronaldo using the word, oh, it was a classic. And I'm like, the guy works for Strike Force, okay? <laughs> He's going to hype up the product. I don't really care that he's over exaggerating and using hyperbole by calling this a classic. You know, it, it's not a classic, okay? I mean, it, it's not a classic fight. It was a fun fight. It was a good fight, maybe even a great fight. But it's not like Marl's gonna say, so you fought in a good, but not a great fight. So how do you feel? <laughs> he's not gonna say that. I mean, don't blame him for say, calling it. You can't really blame him for saying this was a classic you know he, he's just touting the company line I, I you know a lot of a lot of MMA fans wanted to take issue with that and I, I was just like it, it's kind of ridiculous you know I'm, I'm sorry just trying to sell the Prada yeah uh, it, it was a good fight too and it, it, people left I bet you a lot of people left the fight feeling pretty good about the product it, it was a good overall card <laughs> the, the last fight good five round competitive fight you know, some people accused it of, oh, they want sparring speed. They don't want 75% or 70%. And it's like, I don't know. I, I saw a lot of power shots from, from Noons. I don't agree with that. I saw a lot of head movement from Noons that most other MMA fighters don't do. Uh, Diaz does this <clears throat> part, uses his length really well to do a lot of volume punching mm -hmm. that, once again, a lot of MMA fighters don't use. There are a lot of things in this fight that obviously that these two are utilizing that many MMA fighters don't use and I really appreciated that. Well, let's take an example. The uh, last fight UFC 119, uh, you know, Mir versus Coca. First, oh. this fight, what do you think? Oh, this, yeah, this fight is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in comparison to that <coughs> fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, this fight was just a lot more fun to watch. It was really competitive. I think there was a point in the fight when he kind of realized that it was going to go to the decision now. Diaz's chin is too good. Diaz doesn't throw the power shots to really drop noons. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but the go to the decision not because the other guy's dodging or you know both fighters not fighting. They both are fighting. Oh, they're fighting the whole time. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that was the thing. I'm that like, kind of decision, I don't mind. Do you mind? I don't mind too much. Like I said, I I'm a fan of active MMA. That mm -hmm. that's the thing. It, it was active. They were connecting really well. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they were. They had intention of hurting each other, not just. They did. They didn't come across as like having the intention of going to a decision. They. They. It looks like they had the. Well, around the fourth or fifth round, maybe Diaz and his little like you know spin wheel kicks or, or like axe. Well, not a, he didn't actually do spin wheel. He did a uh, axe kick and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's kind of messing around uh, later on. But uh, noons. I mean, those counter uppercuts which are missing. I think he connected with like one or two of them. But he did hit some counters that were pretty flush. That would knock out, that would have knocked down any other fighter not named, D, you know, Nick Diaz. <laughs> That's the thing. My um, guy's awesome. Oh um, yeah, but um, we'll see how the uh, Paul Daly versus Scott Smith fight goes because, um, especially if Paul Daly wins, uh, they're definitely gonna do Paul Daly versus Nick Diaz. Mm -hmm. That's just such a sellable fight right oh, there. Wow. Stand up. Um, uh, the Evangelista, uh, 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 the other cyborg Santos Evangelista, um, could also fight. He he looked really good against Mayor Saromskis, um, and he can fight Nick Diaz, and of course Tywin Woodley. Um, but I think Woodley would need at least one more fight in order to fight like mm -hmm. uh, for the title personally. Um, as far as Diaz goes, it's so tough to say like. I, I don't know if he, he's gonna ever I don't know if he's gonna keep the title in strike force if he fights daily there's always that danger that he's gonna get short left hooked to oblivion despite his chin I mean daily's left hook is vicious <laughs> that thing is just, is deadly if he goes against Woodley he can get out wrestled for three or five rounds mm -hmm. you know and, and lose the decision you know uh, even Billy Evangelista, he kind of throws everything in his punches. You never know if one of those are going to connect and knock out Diaz. I, I'd give Diaz the, 
the advantage over the male cyborg. Um, but against Daly or Woodley, it's tough to say. That one's really hard to say. Well, just great to watch. Yeah. Oh, that's great to watch. And then uh, KJ Nunes, um, I, he's really good, man. He, he's really yeah. good. I mean, uh, <clears throat> even though he lost this fight, I think he got tons of potential. He can go somewhere solid for sure. Yeah, uh, he's a natural 155er, and if you put him against, like, Cavacante, heck, you can put him against uh, Beer Bomb. If you even want to do Thompson, but obviously they want to do Thompson versus Melendez, mm -hmm. they'll probably do that. Absolutely. But Nunes has a lot of good fights at 155. Um, I'd like to see how he does in the UFC. I don't think he's really fought too many wrestlers. He was stuff in takedowns, which is good, and he did have that sense of urgency to get back up, which I really like oh, that's awesome. a lot. Um, so, yeah, um, good showing by both guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just overall, it's a really, uh, really fun night of fights. Um, Strike Force is pretty much the number two MMA organization in North America. A lot of people give criticism to Strike Force because it's like, oh, they can do so much better. They uh, can do this. How much you pay for this? Well, you know, I watched it on the stream actually, but whoever subscribes to Showtime, it's probably like five bucks a month, ten bucks a month, I think. Okay, and <laughs> the people complain. Well, you know, the problem is it, it's kind of like if you ever watch pro wrestling, like TNA versus WWE. Oh, they have all this talent, and they can do so much more. Th this idea of like. You know, they're not utilizing their talent to the fullest. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, I'm of the opinion of UFC is number one. They have, what, 85 to 90% of the best fighters in the world. You know, a lot. some people want to give Strike Force this, this, like, they want to knock it down by saying, oh, well, their fights in the grand scheme of things don't mean anything. It's like, well... They don't have the fighters to have these type of fights, or, you know, matchups that are going to be significant in the grand scheme of things. They just don't have the top fighters, you know? Sorry, you know? I think that they should really put on these fun fights. You know, I'm of that opinion. Yes, what would I like to see them do things differently, you know, fix their heavyweight division, so Fedor or Reem and all those guys are fighting more frequently, not having some mismatches. Yes, you know. At the same time, you know, this is this is an organization that has pretty much the best talent pool of 135-pound women's ta talent. If they're gone, if Strike Force is gone, where do those women go, really, you know? They're starting to get some 145 talent here at, um, you know, well, hopefully you can get Tohill versus uh, Cyborg, you know. Uh, the other thing is, like, a lot of these guys aren't UFC caliber, but they're getting, you know, spots on the main card to make money and living off fighting. I, I'm a big fan of Strike Force, despite their faults, and there's a lot of faults. You know, their Challenger Series. You know, Woodley got out of the Challenger Series. Andre Galvao got out of the Challenger Series. Luke Rockhold was supposed to fight Matt Lindland in this card. He was going to get out of the Challenger Series. So, you know, um, Jacare just fought uh, Tim Kendi. Tim Kendi used to be a Challenger's fighter. So, yes, the Challenger Series is actually working. Kaufman was a Challenger's fighter. They're bringing these prospects from the Challenger Series onto the big cards. I was really worried that they weren't doing that. And I'm waiting for them to bring uh, Ter Tarek Safadi into the main card. Um... You know, I'm waiting for that. Roger Bowling's another guy that should probably hit the main card as well mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon. Um, but, yeah, you know, a lot of people want to diss Strike Force, but, you know, I don't think they should, uh, honestly. Yes, there's a lot of things they need to fix. I could probably do articles on that all day. You should. I probably will. But then they have a lot of positive, too. And he, I, you got to look at the positive with the negatives, and you got to be realistic, too. I That's mean, the problem. be honest. Can we make this show better? Yeah, if we have money. Mm -hmm. If we give Strike Force more money, yeah, they can do more. Yeah. You know, we can have, you know, better camera, we can have more commercials. Yeah, the production stuff. side needs needs fixing and